We've learned so far that fear does not, does not come from God. We know that. We know that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Amen? That's what God has given us. Therefore, since fear is designed to make us feel powerless, unloved and to have an unsound mind it must be coming then from someone other than God it must be coming from the father of all lies the devil himself who is trying to do just the opposite of what God is doing Fear is designed to do just the opposite of what God does, which is to empower us, to love us, and to settle us in our minds. So if we're unsettled, if we feel unloved, if we feel powerless, because of fear, just know that that is a moment, a time in which we must take action. One of the main ways in which the enemy provokes us with fear is through a sudden surprise attack. Fear is something that comes upon us. And it comes upon us at a time in which we're either not in the will of God, we're not completely in the word of God, and we find ourselves not worshiping God. Now, it can come at any time. But it really comes during these times of vulnerability. Now, also, fear is something that is usually attached to something that really means something to us. Otherwise, it wouldn't matter, right? If we didn't care about our health, we wouldn't be afraid of sickness or illness or death. If we didn't care about our jobs, we would just be like buck wild every day, right? We wouldn't be afraid of losing it. We would just be buck wild and just most assuredly we would lose it. Amen? Amen? If our families didn't mean anything to us, we wouldn't be afraid for the people that we care about or afraid for our relationships that were in our marriages if it didn't mean anything to us. The same thing with our future. We would not be afraid of what's going to happen in the future, our finances, and how it's going to be, how it's going to turn out, if it didn't mean something to us. We just got finished talking about retirement and, you know, and all the things we got to do, the planning and this and that, and we're getting older, and we can tell that, you know, that that time is something that's coming down the road and we got to deal with it. If it wasn't something that was important to us, we would just not think about it at all. So fear is something that when we're in a place of vulnerability, it comes upon us and it attacks something that we really care about. Because again, it's designed to, to stifle us or to do just the opposite of, of what God has planned for our lives. So let's look at this very carefully. Our health is something that God cares about. Our jobs are something that God is concerned about. He's provided for us. He said, I shall provide, you know, that the Lord shall pro provide for all of our, our needs, you know, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God has spoken to that. God is the creator of family. He's the one who started the first family and the lineage of families. God is something, he knows about our future. He knows about, God says, he, I know about your future to bring you to an expected end. God knows and cares about our future. He cares about our finances. He cares about all the things that we care about. And he's not given us the spirit of fear. But he's empowered us. And has showered us with his love. 
so that concerning all of these things that mean something to us, we can have a sound mind. We can be settled in our minds and peaceful in our hearts and, and, and confident in our spirits that with every area of our lives, the past, the present, and the future, God is going to bring us to an expected end. An expected end of peace and not evil. So what are we afraid about? What is this fear all about? Let's look at Psalm 55 for a minute. Psalm 55, I just want to point out to you that fear comes upon us and then it tries to overwhelm us. In Psalm 55, verse 5, it says, Fearful, this is King David, Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. So the enemy is trying to convince us that all these things that God has promised to us are not going to be effective. God doesn't care about it. God's not able to do anything about it. And so therefore he comes at us, he charges at us, and causes us to simply just be fearful and be trembling and to be in horror and to be overwhelmed with things. Amen? Now let me just ask you a question before we go any further. Do you or do you not know when fear comes upon you? We know, don't we? We know. We pretty much know. Like, sometimes it's subtle and it kind of rises to the top and the next thing you know we're just completely fearful. Sometimes it just comes upon us like bam, like a knockout punch and we just like, we get just boiled over with it. Usually we end up having this sinking feeling in our stomachs and you know, we, or we have some type of anxiety attack about it and this and that and we just start lunching out. Amen. Can church say amen? amen? Because of fear. So because we do know, because we are aware that fear is present, how, whether or not it's been there for a while, or whether or not it just comes upon us based on something that we care about, we know that it's there when it, when it shows itself to us. Therefore, the question becomes, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to continue to be stifled by fear? Are we going to continue to be held back and put in bondage? Are we going to continue to be tormented by the, by the fear that, that is designed to do just the opposite of what God seeks to do in our lives? Well, the answer is, it depends. It depends on the type of action that we decide to take when it comes upon us. At the very moment when fear comes upon us, we have to talk ourselves into trusting God. And the more we talk ourselves into trusting God, the more we're going to start believing the talk that we're talking. Amen? So at the very moment when fear comes, we've got to say, what am I going to do about this situation? Most times, we just give in to it and we go into this space, we go into this place, and we end up staying there a while. In fact, we end up staying there longer than we should. I'm not saying to you that fear is not going to come upon you. It's surely going to come. But when fear comes, we've got to make a real quick and a real spiritual decision at that very moment. In Psalm 56, verse 3, it says, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In another translation, it says, When I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Now, what is going on here? We've got King David, and he's got all kinds of stuff going on around about him. And whatever was going on at this time, uh, in fact, it was when he was in, in, a, in a war with the Philistines, when, when he was in the midst of war, 
Fear had come upon him, had overtook him, and, and had overwhelmed him, but he only let that fear stay there long enough for him to realize that he was not, that that was not for him, and fear did not belong to him, and it did not come from the God that he served. And it was at the very moment when he said, when I became afraid, it is at that time that I began to trust God. So now we've got, we've got a paradigm shift. We've got a situation change. He says, when I am afraid, I will trust in thee. When? When is the very moment when fear comes upon us? I will. When he said, I will, that's when he was saying, I will become aware. In other words, we become, we are conscious and we become conscious of the fear when it comes upon us. We know exactly when fear comes. And so he's saying, when I am afraid, when fear comes upon me, he's saying, I will take some action. Now we could either say, I will take some action, or I will give in to the fear. We've got that very conscious choice that we can make right ready on the spot. So David said, when, at the very minute, I will become, or I will trust in thee, God. He's saying, I will make a conscious decision to simply just have faith and believe and rely and even lean on the everlasting arms. Isn't that good? Now let me personalize it. When fear comes, we are not just deciding or talking ourselves into trusting God. When fear comes, we are actually calling on God. Now, there's a difference. You say, oh, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust God. That becomes kind of the surface level talking ourselves into something. But when we say, God, I'm going to trust you, then it's personal. It's a prayer. It's a cry. It's, a, it's asking God to move at that very moment and to come against whatever has decided to come against us. So we've got to decide to have a, a, a right quick conversation with God. Now let's look at this. That's exactly what David really did. He said, when I am afraid, I will trust in thee. He was talking directly to God. At the moment in which he became afraid, he said, Lord, I'm going to trust in you. I don't know what else to do. In the situation that David was talking about, he was afraid for his life. He was in the middle of a war. And so at that very moment, in the middle of the war that he was in, in the middle of all that was happening around about him, he said, you know what, I can either give in to what I see around me, I can give in to the fear that is, that is beating, beating me up and causing me torment on the inside, or I can just simply say, Lord, I'm going to trust you with my life. Now, don't forget, God loves us, and God cares about everything that we care about. God cares about us. He cares about our marriage. He cares about our future. He cares about our retirement. He cares about whether or not we're going to be able to pay our mortgage. He cares about whether we're going to be able to eat and what we'll be able to eat. In fact, he says, don't take any thought about what you shall eat, about what you shall wear. But instead, God knows that we have need of these things. 
And that's why it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. In other words, God is saying, Take your mind off the situation. When fear comes upon us, take action by just simply moving towards God. David said, when? At the moment, at the time, at the very second, at the narrow second, when I get afraid, I go trust in you, Lord. Now, I couldn't preach this sermon unless I've tried it myself. I've been through something. I'm going through something. And, and with what I'm going through, I've had to rely solely on the Word of God. And surely, when I, did, when I started doing this, at the very moment, it was just almost like moment by moment by moment by moment by moment. And I kept saying, Lord, I'm going to trust you. Boom, Lord, I'm going to trust you. Fear, boom, Lord, I'm going to trust you. And surely, in the midst of it all, as crazy as things seem to be, God turned the situation around. God shut some mouths up. Amen. God sat some people down, took some people out. Amen. And so I'm, I'm not saying, saying taking people out the earth, off. I'm out, out of my way. Now I'm not saying use this as a weapon. But I'm saying use this as a tool. When fear comes upon us, yeah, I was telling Lady Shelley in the way in this morning, I said, you know, I found this one scripture that has meant more to me in my spiritual life than pretty, pretty much anything recently that I've read in the Word. This one scripture, at the moment in which I become afraid, Lord, I'm going to trust in you. Try it. And I'm saying to you, try it when it's going down. Don't wait until afterwards. Don't wait until you've beat yourself up. Don't wait until you've worked yourself into an, an anxiety attack. Don't wait until your, your stomach is uh, upside down. At the very moment in which you feel it, so, oh wait, hold up, was that fear? Yes, I'm afraid. Yeah, we have to acknowledge it. Let's not be fake about it. We know when we're afraid, but at the moment in which we become afraid, I'm afraid, but now, Lord, I'm going to trust in you. And that's when God gets, we release God into entering into our situation. And this is the time when we're going to pretty much have to do this almost every minute of every day. Amen? Because, I mean, if you think about it, you listen to stuff, you watch stuff, you, 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 you listen to your own thoughts, you, 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 you know, you think about just how things are, how things could possibly be. You know, you listen to the news, you watch the internet, whatever it is, you get your news source from, whatever, you just walk, walk around your office with the talk, this and that. You know, at every moment, you know, we, we receive stuff and we get caught out there and the next thing you know, we, we don't even know it, but we're afraid. Now, oh, okay, now what about, now we become down and downtrodden and, and messed up and, and Lord, I'm going to trust in you. At this very moment. I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to keep trusting in you. Now the reason why David knew that he could talk directly to God is because he knew what God was capable of. He knew who God was. He had seen God move before. And so he, he was reminded of what God had done and the relationship that he had with God. And based on that relationship, he knew that God would move again in the very moment in which he needed God to move. Psalm 56 verse 9 says, When I cry unto thee, he's talking to God now, when I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. He didn't just stop right there like, okay, you know, I would say, oh, I know, you know, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Hallelujah. Amen. We try to talk ourselves into believing that, but we don't really believe that because we keep walking as if, you know, as if whatever weapon that's formed against us is going to prosper. Hear me today. 
But David is saying, wait a minute now, hold on. When I cry unto you, Lord, then my enemies shall turn back. I'm not concerned about them anymore. And the reason why he said he was not concerned, he said, I, my enemies will turn back. This I know. I know what's going to take place. I have complete trust that God is going to look for me, look out for me, because, listen, because God is for me. And he was confident that God was for him because he was for God. Now, that's where we usually get messed up. If we're not in the will of God, if we're not praying like we need to, if we're not reading the word like we should, if we're not worshiping God as much as we used to, then we get, we get shameful. We open up a window of having a lack of confidence that God is going to be for us because we have not been for God in the way that we believe that we should have been. But there is nothing further from the truth. The devil wants us to believe that God is not for us. But God said that he will be with us always. Even until the end of time. That we don't have to worry about God separating himself for us because he said neither life nor death, nor principalities, nor power, nor things to come, nor things present can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. So David had complete confidence no matter what he had been through, the man, no matter what he had done or had not done, God, he knew that God was going to be for him. Because he knew that in his heart of hearts, reminding, let me remind you, that David had a heart after God's own heart. So if we've got loving God in our hearts, then no matter what situations we find ourselves in, we can be confident that God will hear our prayers now. Sometimes God will let us go through things. Because God wants to do something and deal with us. You know, we always say we're under heavy dealings with the Lord. Well, that means God is dealing with us, so he may allow for us to go through some sticky and some scary situations. Amen. Amen. But that doesn't mean that God is not for us. That just means God is trying to break us of our desires. So we thank God today that we can confidently say at the moment, no matter what, at the moment in which fear comes upon us, no matter what the situation is, we've got to talk ourselves and believe ourselves into trusting God. Amen. Let's take a deeper look. Real quick. Psalm 18, 118, verse 6. Psalm 118, verse 6 says, The Lord is on my side I will not fear what can man do to me. What can anybody do to me? The Lord is on my side. He said in verse 5, I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. God is for us. In Romans 8, verse 31 and 32, Romans 8, verse 31, verse 32. Paul said, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that 
spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? How should we not then know that since God delivered up his own son, the Lord Jesus Christ on our behalf, why is it then that we fear that God will not come to our rescue? Why is it that we put our minds in such a place that we allow for the enemy to trick us and convince us that God is not going to be able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or ask according to his power that he has given to us that works on the inside of us. Why are we afraid? Why do we not trust in God? A God who has proven himself trustworthy. A God who loves us even in spite of ourselves if we experience fear fear does not come from God but when it does come upon us and it will then we have to make some very decisive decisions to either go further into our fear or to just simply realize that the Lord is on our side. That God is for us. And if God be for us, then who can be against us? That God loves us, that he's given us, that he has not given us the spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. Therefore today, if you don't remember anything else that I have said, I want you to remember two words, and I'll sit down. Trust God. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Amen? Amen? That's one of those words that just linger in the atmosphere. Trust God. At the moment in which you're afraid, trust God. You start thinking about how you're going to be able to pay your mortgage when you turn 72. Trust God. When you're concerned 